All right, good, good morning, everyone. It's your boy, Rome. This morning, we're going to take a look at a very simple workflow for working with teens, um, high school students. One of the problems that I see that a lot of photographers may be uh, experiencing, especially when they're starting out working with schools or working with um, young teens, I get this a lot um, around graduation time. And more young people today are looking for something a little bit more modern, something a little bit more um, Instagram-ish or something along that line. And what they want for the most part is something that's very, very um, um, creative. And I think for a lot of us, you know, where we start to fall into a rut is that we are not really familiar with, you know, the um, um, ins and outs of how to pose these specific, you know, young people. Um, and the key to it is very simple. Keep it simple. And what you can do, it's up to you as a photographer, but what I found that works for me when I'm working with um, a young um, a graduate or, you know, a school age, you know, person, I provide them with a number of, you know, potential uh, poses that we're going to go over, you know, that we're, we'll be capturing during their session. And it's just, you know, a PDF where they can see what the poses are going to look like. I always have it with me on the day of the shoot so I can remind them exactly, you know, what these poses are. Good morning, Russell. What these poses are and how we're going to um, try to capture them. Now, <clears throat> a lot of them don't really want to shoot in the studios anymore. They want to shoot with their cars, with their motorcycles. They want to shoot on location. So, you know, these are things you're going to have to take into consideration, you know, if that's the type of photography that you want to do. Now, I know a lot of photographers that, you know, work with high schools and junior high schools, and they have a very simple three-light setup. They go into the school, they set everything up, the student walks in, they take the photo, the student walks out. Next person comes in, you know, you know, rinse and repeat. And I've seen that same approach work for gyms, martial arts studios, whatever the case it may be. But when you're working with young people who don't really have a strong grasp of basic posing. Most people walk into the studio thinking that they know exactly what they're going to do on the day of the shoot. And they have it in their mind because they're taking photos and they're shooting a lot of stuff uh, for Instagram and for Facebook and other social media platforms. But that's nowhere near the reality. Once they step onto the, in the studio, and now there's the lights and camera and possibly a makeup artist or something like that, they start to fall apart. And you start to see that in the expressions in their face. You know, these shots here were just really me um, uh, setting up the lighting and making sure my lighting was proper for the, the shots. And you'll see the transition from where, um, you know, I'm just testing for lighting and stuff like that. And then we move on to um, the actual capture of the images. So from here, you know, again, I'm still just adjusting my lighting. And right about here is where we start to actually capture the images. So once we've, you know, identified, you know, I've identified exactly what I'm looking for lighting wise, I'm making sure that I got really good catch light in the eyes. And, you know, you can zoom in here and you can see, you know, your, you can see your reflections of your, your light modifiers. Uh, you got good illumination around the entire face. That's going to be the key because most of these are just going to be headshots. You're not really even going to see the majority of the body once you crop this for delivery. So that's another thing that you really want to uh, make sure that your client is aware of, you know, when it comes to their wardrobe selections and things like that, you know, how much of the image that you anticipate will actually be seen in the actual um, deliverable image. So like something like this, you know, it's really, um, it's a strong image. So let's just go ahead and lighten this one, bring the lighting up a little bit, brighten it just a touch. Let's see what we're getting around the eyes. We don't want to overexpose it, obviously. Um, yeah, everything looks good. Now she had some issues that I ran into uh, that her mom discussed with me, um, that they were out at the lake that weekend and she got sunburn um, around her face. 
So, you know, that was something that I was going to have to take into consideration in the post. So let's just go ahead and jump over to Photoshop and we'll just run through this real quick. And I want to edit this in Photoshop. There we go. And let's open this in Photoshop. Give it a few seconds and it should just pop up. Hopefully. But, you know, like I said, guys, you know, the most important thing is knowing exactly what it is you're trying to capture. Get a really good uh, exposure. Your lighting is going to be key, especially when it comes to your post work. Now, as you see here, she's wearing almost no makeup, no distinguishable makeup whatsoever. And in some cases, that's a very good thing because, you know, it's like working with a blank canvas, you know, when it comes to the, the editing side of this. So I'm going to go ahead and crop this image really quick, right around the size that I would, you know, present it for my deliverable. And that's going to be somewhere up in here. And keep her eyes centered. And I may even just crop out some of the forehead, the, the hair here. And we're just going to go ahead and go, we're going to roll with that. Okay. So let's say this is the image that you're going to be working with. Obviously, um, you know, we can go through the same steps that we go through every morning, you know, where you're going and you're, you're going to duplicate this layer. You're going to go through and do a few other things. Um, I'm going to show you guys another panel that I work with sometimes. Uh, and it can be uh, a very useful tool depending on your workflow. So if we zoom in here a little bit, we can start to see right around her forehead where the, um, the skin is peeling. And that's from you know, tanning and, and uh, sunburn or what have you. So that's one of the things that you're going to have to correct. You got a few little flyaway hairs. But we, on the day of this shoot, we were really good about managing the hair. So you know, that wasn't a big issue. So let's just start off with a normal routine. But we're going to go to this panel and take a look at this one. This one is Pro Workflow X. So if you, starting out from the beginning, they almost have it numbered you know, along the lines of what you would do first, second, third, and so on. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click here where it says the healing layer, and we're gonna just jump back over to our um, layers here, and you can see that it already created a duplicate layer for us to do our healing on. So we're just gonna zoom in here and start working on some of the areas where we want to uh, fix some of these things. So just make your brush smaller, go in and look for those little areas and just start touching them up as best you can. Now when you're working in the hairline, you got to be a little bit more careful because you will start to create these little uh, patterns that are visible. But most of that, you know, you can hide within the blur or you can hide it within um, your frequency separation or even your dodging and burning, you know, so it just depends on which of the techniques you're going to use. If you're going to be using more frequency separation, you can get it that way on the texture layer. Or um, some of this will also, you know, you'll wind up being able to correct some of it um, even in the color layer. So I'm just going in here and I'm just looking for where I see those little um, flaky skin. And I'm just going to take those out as best I can. Now, like I said, you know, before, anytime you're editing, you know, take your time. Don't rush through this, you know, get it done as, you know, efficiently as possible. But at the same time, you know, time is money. So you want your client to be happy. That's the most important thing. But at the same time, you don't want to spend, you know, days and hours working on the same image, you know. So let's go in here and get a couple of these little flyaway hairs. Here's the one right here I definitely want to get. And you can see here, you can just start blending these in. Now, so the tool that I'm using uh, to cap, you know, to um, take these areas out here, it has multiple settings. So you can go here, like right now I set to normal. You can go to replace, uh, multiply, screen, darken, lighten. And let's say darken as an example. So you can go to an area that you know is going to be dark. And then when you go over that area, it helps to darken it just to blend it more into that area. But we're going to go back to normal. That's where we want to set this. And we're going to go and just start removing the final few hairs. And there's more, but, you know, again, a lot of this is just going to be how much of it you need to take out based on what you see. But if you're tethering 
you will be able to see this stuff. You'll see it instantly. So once you see it and you identify it, you know, what you want to be able to do at that point is say, okay, you know, what needs to be adjusted? Whether you have a makeup artist there, if you're working with teens, maybe there's a parent um, or a sister or something like that, and you want to get them to help you um, as best as possible so that that way you can, you know, speed up your workflow. That's all I'm saying. So what you don't want to do is go over and adjust these things yourself. Like I talked about before, you want to avoid as much as possible making any physical contact, especially with teens. So, okay, let's, that's weird. So we're just going to take out these last few. And you see how that's creating a pattern? So you have to be careful of the texture as you're, you're adjusting this texture or you're going over textures because you will start to see those. Now you can go over them a couple of times. You can start to even blend those together or you can use your clone stamp. So if you go to your clone stamp, you know, just grab, you know, a certain area and then you can just go back. Whoops. I got that set from what I was doing yesterday. So, but when you go into your clone stamp and you pick, um, you select, you know, you want to make sure that it's a current layer that you have selected and that you don't have anything selected that's going to be a problem. So once you determine what's going to work, speed up your workflow, you determine which tools are going to be best for you, that's, that's going to be the key to a lot of it. So this panel gives you a lot of flexibility if you are new to um, a lot of these workflows. So if you're not familiar with a lot of plugins or something like that, then this is going to be very, very good for you guys. If you are already acquiring a number of uh, actions or something like that, you know, then, you know, take your time and just work with those and see exactly what is going to be more efficient for you. Now, some of you, like I said, are starting out, <clears throat> you know, experimenting with um, different be right back, work is, <laughs> work is calling, I got you there. Well, you can always watch this video later in the day. But like I said, you know, so this area here, you know, there's a number of different ways you can address this. You can select it, you know, and just move some texture if you have to. You know, whatever's gonna work best for you um, to get the best result is gonna be the key. So you're gonna have multiple tools to do multiple things. So you see how that, whoops, you see how that blended pretty well? So you know, it's, it's like anything else, you know, you just got to pick the tool that works more efficiently for you and just allows you to work the way you work. So just because you see someone else using a certain tool, a specific tool, that's a tool that they are comfortable with. You got to pick a tool that you're comfortable with. So what, whichever tool that is, just, you know, grab it, get the job done, you know. I mean, obviously you wouldn't, you know, use a hammer when you need a screwdriver, but you get the idea. So we're just going to do this really quick. Uh, there's not a lot of other things that need to really be addressed. Her eyes are good. Like I said, there's a couple of little things, you know, if you're this close in that you could correct. You know, just like here and here. All right, so we're good. Let's zoom back out. So obviously, you know, other than someone looking at this photo, you know, at, at full resolution, they're not going to see most of that stuff. So let's go back to our panel. And the next thing that you have, next choices you have in this specific panel is going to be full body, medium length, and headshot. So I would say this is more of a headshot if you want to think about it from that perspective. So that's what we're going to go with. So we're just going to click on headshot. And it should start creating a number of different layers. And it's going to take a few seconds for it to generate those layers. Now, some of these panels uh, are more modern and they're really, really fast. And others, not so much because, you know, a lot of them, the coding was done, you know, a couple of years ago. But right here, you see where it says, you know, you're going to use a brush tool to brush over specific areas, smooth out, you know, uneven textures. And it says, do not paint over edges, eyes, nose, lips, 
or darken freckles or anything like that because this is going to pretty much blur everything. So you say, okay, that's good. That's what I need to know. So the um, layer mask is set to black. Your foreground color is going to be set to white, and you're going to be using a traditional brush. Always make sure you already have selected uh, a soft round bar brush, and then you'll be able to go in here based on the size. And, you know, first you just want to test just to see how much of an effect you're getting there. And you start to paint away. And for some reason my computer is running just a wee bit slow and I think it's because I have one of my other drives connected. And that one seems to always have an effect on this computer. I don't know why. I think it's just because it's such an older drive. And as you see here, what, you're, what I'm doing, you're not seeing major changes. You know, it's not like with portraiture, you know, where it really goes in and it does, you know, huge, um, large movements every time you, you know, paint somewhere. So you can kind of see it's softening the skin. I'm, you know, blurring out, if you want to think about it from that perspective, um, some of the imperfections, maybe pimples, things like that. You can use this re relatively quick and just go in and soften the skin if you're using this specific um, panel. And then you can always increase the brush size, things like that. You know, I'm just going to make this a little bit larger so you guys can just see what I'm doing here. And it's softening the skin. It's not perfect. This is not necessarily how I would go about doing it but it's an option that you can go with, right? So let's do a before and after. So that's before and that's after. So you see a drastic difference if you look at it from here. Now, if you look at your layer mask, if you just click on your layer mask and hit option, click, you can see everywhere that you paint it. So you could take your brush and you could just go in and just say, okay, I'm gonna paint over everything. I'm just gonna accept the eyes. And then you can go back in with your brush to fine tune this. And this is just to give you um, more coverage quicker. That's all we're doing here. We're just gonna cover the whole face really quick. So we know we got everything, nose, everything, right? It's just a faster way to do it. And you can kind of see the, the image itself so you know where everything is falling if you're gonna do the hands and everything else. So you can just go ahead and you know, let's just go ahead and paint that in for now. Then again, option click on that layer and you can see as we zoom out a little bit, let's zoom out and then turn that off. You see what it's done. So now if you're concerned about like the eyes or something like that, you can come down here to your, um, your foreground color or you can just hit X and it'll switch it between whatever two colors you have selected. So if you have the base colors, which is black and white, you can just use X to switch back and forth. So now we want to go in and make sure that we did not paint over the lips or something like that. So we're just going to stay with the same brush, make it smaller. Go ahead and paint in black around the areas that we definitely want to keep sharp. Okay, the eyes for sure. Eyelashes. The eyebrows, you see how it, blend, it faded out the eyebrows or it, it blurred out the eyebrows. And I went a little too far with that. So, you know, you can, like I said, you can just switch back and forth and you can see where I'm just going to bring the softening back right above the eyebrow. But I want the eyebrow itself to stay um, sharp. Make this brush a little bit smaller. And then I can go in and just follow the line of the eyebrows just bring that detail back in. There we go. So we didn't paint over the hair or anything like that. So, you know, those, that texture should be the same as it was from, you know, when we actually first opened the image. So we shouldn't have to worry about that. So if we turn this layer off and on, you get that, um, you know, airbrushed look. I think that's too much. So I would bring this down to, you know, maybe 65, 70, somewhere in there, where you're still maintaining a lot of the texture in the skin. 
but you're also correcting, you know, some of the little imperfections that you may not want to be in the final image. And, you know, by using, you know, something like this, you're going to speed this up, you know, tremendously. So, you know, the next option that you have is going to be dodging and burning if you choose to do that. You have an eye enhancement and you have teeth um, uh, whitening. Well, you know, no teeth are being seen here. So we could zoom in and look at our eyes. I don't think there's a lot we need to do with our eyes, but if we just wanted to see what it can do, you just click on the eye enhancement and it's going to do basically the same thing. It's going to tell you uh, with this little uh, pop-up what can be used or what you can use this for and how to use it. So the first one is going to be brighten eyes and that's going to be around the whites of the eyes. And you have your brush selected and you just go in there and just start painting away. And all you're trying to do is just kind of paint out any red veins or something like that. Just enough where it still looks natural and clean. And then the next one up is sparkle. And that one you would use to kind of bring more life here. And we can just do a little simple swipe around. And we turn that off. And on. So we see what we're getting. Cool. So most of these tools, like I said, you know, depending on what it is that you're trying to achieve, you can use these tools for any number of things. I mean, I've used these panels to edit product photography. I've used these panels to edit, you know, uh, motorcycle photos and real estate, you know. So it just depends on how you're going to apply each specific um, tool. So then further down, like I said, we had teeth whitening. Now we have um, skin tone, skin glow, and skin texture. The texture one uh, can be beneficial, like if you get to an area where you blur it out too much and you say, okay, well, I need a little bit more texture in here. So you could click on the skin texture. And what it's going to do is generate a layer. And it's going to use a, um, from your brush, it's going to create a brush, basically, that it's going to allow you to paint texture in. So here's your skin texture layer. And as you see here, I don't know how well you can see that on YouTube or on Facebook, but it's using basically a brush. So if you go up here to your brushes, well, I have them over here, you can see which brush has been selected based on um, this specific panel. And most of these panels will also install these brushes. So let's say, for instance, um, I wanted to add just a little bit of texture in certain areas. I could just, you know, dab it in you know, where I feel like I need it. Maybe here on the bridge of the nose, right there, maybe where it's missing. You know, just little areas you could, if you see texture that's missing, and I don't see a lot, but I'm just using this as an example, you could go in and add just a little bit more texture where it, you know, it looks like you've blurred out too much or whatever the case it is. But again, here's the full size image. So, you know, most people wouldn't notice that. But just because people don't notice it doesn't mean you should not address it. That's all I'm saying. So we're going to go ahead and put all of these things in a group. I'm just going to do one group, Command-G. And we're just going to call this um, Group 1. Okay. So we can turn this off and on. And we see. I think the eye whitening is too much. So we can go back in our group. And go here to this layer and we're going to bring that down just a little bit maybe to about 50 and then yeah that's not too bad so this again you know one of these panels is going to speed up your workflow a lot faster than you know running individual um, actions and, and making sure, you know, basically what they're giving you here is kind of a workflow. You know, you go from one to two to three to four to five or so on. And, you know, you're able to kind of move along. Now, the next thing that you have here is going to be some of your color grading. So you can do different types of color grading, you know, based on, you know, the theme that you're trying to go with. So we're going to go shift option command E 
and we're going to create a stamp layer, which is basically a layer of everything that's below this one layer, and we're going to look at some of these different um, uh, color grades. So you have one that's called cinematic, so we're going to click on that. And it does something kind of like a, looks almost like a teal orange. That's a lot. But again, you know, you can adjust the opacity, bring it down. And then you can also go into the individual layers and you can adjust, you know, um, what's selected here. So the selective color you can adjust. You can go down and look at the, um, you know, the midtones, you know, the color balance. You know, all of these things are here that you can adjust on your own if you, if you choose to. So, you know, nothing is set in stone. You know, it's all based on exactly how you want it to look. So let's say, well, okay, that's not working for me. I'm not feeling that. So you want to turn that off. So just turn it off. Go to the next one. See what that one looks like. So let's go with this Vogue one and see if that's something that we'll like. That's similar, but not quite the same. I don't like what it's doing to the hair. So if we turn it off, you see that bring back the natural hair color. I don't like the, the shadowing in the hair. But then again, you can always go in and mask that out. So if you don't want it, you know, you can either add a layer mask to this and then only paint it in where you want it. And you, you have total control. So, you know, you only limit it by, you know, the way that you work with these actual panels. Myself, I don't use any of these uh, color presets. Uh, I'm just showing you that they're here. So if you want to use them or you want to experiment with them, you're more than welcome to. Then you have, you know, things like for the similar to HDR where you, you know, bring out all the... Uh, crispiness of the details down here. This is kind of like a grunge portrait. Um, there's one for digital paint that kind of makes it look more like a painting. Um, then, you know, you go over to beauty and then now here you have um, you have some of your other uh, tools. You have some dodging and burning. You have the dodge and burn with 50% gray. You know, so you have all these different um, tools that are available to you, you know, just based on whatever it is you want to do. Then you also have some makeup. You know, you got mascara, you have eyeshadow, you have smoky eye, lip shades, you have uh, like a creamy foundation, you have something for cheeks if you want to rosy up the cheeks a little bit, you have a bronzer for tanning skin, you know, you have a white powder, you know, for basically, you know, uh, evening out the skin tone. So a lot of these things are already set up for you, so it'll just speed up your workflow as fast as, you know, you guys want it to be. Then you can go into here, you have different scenes, things that you can experiment with. You can do vignettes, you can do film grain, shaping. Uh, there's a smart liquify, you know, if you want to go in and liquify something, so you can click on that. And it basically does, you know, the obvious. It, it's going to open your, um, well, I assume it will. It's supposed to open your liquify and then allows you to go into liquify and make those adjustments. But again, like I said, for some reason my computer's running slow today. So you can just go in, um, you can go to face, and let's say I want to, you know, just bring that in just a little bit. Her hand in proportion to her face is a little large, so maybe want to make that just a little bit smaller. That's another thing that you want to keep into consideration uh, when you're posing someone. If you're moving, you know, specific parts of their body around um, or you're, you're posing them a certain way, Make sure that you're not putting uh, a part of their body forward of their face or something. It's going to make it look, you know, really large in comparison. So you don't want the hand to look as large as the head or something like that. So you just be careful when you're making those posing decisions. So let's go here. And yeah, I don't know. Like I said. I have a, one of my slower drives connected to this computer, and I know it's reading from it, and I, I guarantee you that's what's slowing it down today. But, you know, you can see, you know, if I turn this off, you know, you'll see where, what little adjustments I made to the face and also to her shoulder. So, but all of these things are right here. But like I said before, all of these panels really do is bring up what, you know, Photoshop can already do. It just speeds up the workflow by giving you, you know, a, you know, quick access to it. So even warp, you know, if you wanted to go in and warp something, as an example, you know, you could use a warp filter and you could go in here and you could choose and move things around or whatever 
but it, it depends on the individual as to how they do their modifications. You know, everyone has a different way of doing things. Um, I don't use the warp tool that much on people, but I've used it, you know, quite a bit on, um, you know, like for real estate photography, product photography, things like that. So let's just say, you know, we're, we're happy with um, everything that we've done so far. Um, you know, you could just say, okay, I'm good. And you got to remember, you know, I'm, I'm explaining this to you. So that's what's slowing down my workflow. So if I wasn't talking and I was just using this um, plug-in, one of these panels, you know, I'm going to go through this really, really quick, you know, four, five, six minutes, you know, and you're, you're done if you know exactly what it is you're trying to achieve, right? Now, yes, this is going to be faster than, you know, our traditional frequency separation and dodging and burning and all that other stuff. But if you're just trying to get a good-looking portrait out and you really either don't have the time or don't want to put, you know, a lot of time into editing something like this, these panels can work for you. So it doesn't matter which panel you go with, you know. So if you go with this, you know, Pro Workflow X or if you went with um, um, Retouch Pro or if you, you know, something from Retouch Academy or whichever one it is, it doesn't make a difference. It's just you finding what's going to work best for your workflow and incorporating it into your workflow and getting it done. That's the key. So, yeah, I mean, you can still go in and do some dodging and burning. You can still go in and, you know, do whatever you want to to finalize this image. You know, if you don't do anything else, you know, but say, okay, well, I'm, I'm good with everything and I just want to add just a little bit more contrast. Okay, then you could just take that image and duplicate it, you know, simply enough. And then you could, um, you know, you could just uh, use soft light or something like that, you know, just apply soft light to it, you know, so that then you can add a little bit more uh, contrast and, and, and separation, you know, between the highlights and the shadows, just to give it a little bit more depth. But again, like I said, guys, it's up to you and, and what you want this image to look like. So if we save this image, let's hit save. It should round trip back over to um, Capture One once it saves. And then let's go take a look at the comparison. Now, this is a large image, so it may take a few seconds, you know, for it to process. But then again, like I said, my computer's running a little slow today. So let's jump over. So here's our edited version. So we see that that's 464, and this is 464. So that's before, and that's after. Before, after. So simply enough, you know, you can you know use Lightroom, you can use Capture One, you could use whichever um, culling and adjusting. Um, software you want to, you can integrate that with Photoshop or you can work with uh, Affinity Photo. Any of those applications will give you a lot of the same um, features. But, you know, programs like Affinity Photo, you most likely will not be able to run these panels. Um, I don't know how many actions are available for a program like Affinity Photo. I haven't seen many. But Affinity Photo does have a lot of things that are already pre-built into it, like Photoshop but it doesn't have, um, at least as I'm making this live, it doesn't have as many features when it comes to the things that we're doing for portraits um, built into Affinity Photo or something like that, or even GIMP, you know, one of the other P free um, softwares that are out there. So anyway, hopefully you guys learned something today and, you know, something um, you'll be able to incorporate into your workflow. If so, I would love to see what you guys are creating. So make sure to post that in the group. And I will see you guys tomorrow morning. See, my phone's already going off because I have shoots today. But I will talk to you guys soon. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And get out there and create something amazing. Peace. I'm out of here.